Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the day three. Uh, it's already day three uh, bash, uh, at the MHSR Community Conference. Uh, we are absolutely um, delighted to see you all there, and hopefully you will be able to say hi in the chat as well and let us know how you're doing. Um, just a very quick housekeeping, as usually every morning. Um, this is our program for today. Um, I believe it's for today, yes. Um, so we'll start from Sarah Culkin, uh, talking about Open Up Analytics. Uh, we are really looking forward to it. Um, we also have sessions from Chris Maney, uh, we have Health Economics uh, blog from Gianluca and from Robert. And we will have some uh, virtual media perspective, uh, as well as uh, we will hear about Open Analytics once again, but this time from uh, Rebecca Kilik. Um, our lightning talk session today will be uh, starting a bit later. Uh, I will see you all at 3 p.m., but as usually, uh, I will ask speakers if any of the speakers here today to join a bit earlier so we can check all the equipment. And last but not least, we will have a session. So I can try this now. Um, we will have session from uh, Alberto Cairo, who is absolutely um, amazing. Uh, and uh, he will be talking about uh, data visualization. Uh, please join us if you can. Um, as usual, again, uh, please participate in the chat. We really want to hear from you. I can see some messages coming, which is fantastic. Um, also, we'd love to hear from you on, on Twitter if you are active Twitter users. Uh, same hashtag, and please follow us um, and uh, let us know um, if, um, if you have anything to share. Uh, also, um, we are on Slack. Um, I know not everyone is using Slack, but if you use Slack, uh, please make sure to join. I'm sure you can use this tiny URL to join if you haven't joined already. And if you joined already, uh, please find our conference channel and chat with our uh, video with other participants. Sorry. Um, also, we just announced Hacksaw Time collaboration on Monday. Um, and when you have a free minute, please uh, make sure you watch the session from uh, Monday. And please make sure that you will uh, join Hacksaw Time. Uh, this is time uh, sharing, uh, time sorry, time bank initiative, uh, which aimed at uh, collaboration and uh, sharing knowledge. So please make sure um, you you will check it. Um, and as usually, uh, we don't tolerate any harassment, uh, any offensive language. Uh, so I uh, have uh, opportunity to ban people if they violate these principles. So please be kind and be polite to each other. Um, just quick, uh, I'm sure everyone already found chat because you can see chat uh, is coming, but just usual um, introduction. Yes, we have chat box here on the right. Uh, you can hide it, uh, but you can also open it. So uh, please participate in the chat and uh, say how you're doing and where you're from. Uh, also, please ask a question using as a question button, um, and uh, you can also vote on the questions you like. Uh, please vote on the questions because sometimes we don't have time to answer all of them, and we have to choose only the most popular ones. And also, uh, last but not least, uh, um, you will be automatically moved from session to session when next session starts. But you also can use drop down menu uh, on the left up corner, say shadow. So you can choose session to attend, and you can also rewatch sessions if you missed any. Uh, but please stay here now with us in this live session. And I think this is all from me actually for today. Uh, so I'm stop sharing my screen, and I'm delighted to um, move the whole power to Zoe now. Good morning. Um, I'm delighted to be facilitating some of the really interesting talks. All the conference has been fantastic so far. So I'll just scoot along and start by introducing our first speaker, which is Sarah Culkin. She's the head of analytics for NHSX, which is a recently formed national body within the NHS. She's also on the board for AFA, which is the Association of Professional Healthcare Analysts. She has a number of important areas of work related to analytics under her portfolio, particularly focusing today on the topic of opening up analytics. Thank you, over to you. Thank you very much. I'm hoping that you can see my screen. If not, do shout. Not, not yet. Right, let's try that again. That's just me again. Hmm. I'll come out. Okay. Thank you. Cooking on gas. Great stuff. 
So, um, hello, yes, I'm Sarah Culkin, uh, currently the head of the analytics unit at NHSX, and I just thought I would start just to tell tell you a little bit about NHSX, because it's not necessarily in the minds of, of everyone, uh, it being quite a new organisation. So we were formed just over a year ago, um, and we're a joint unit that brings together people from the Department of Health and Social Care and NHS England and Improvement um, and focused, as the slide says, on accelerating digitisation of health and care. Um, and we do this through providing um, policy and then also leading the strategy and the, the project delivery. Um, there's a whole load of stuff that we, uh, we prioritise on, which is uh, shown on the slide here. Um, and essentially, these all kind of fall out of the health secretary's technology vision alongside the NHS long term plan. Um, and you can read for yourself all the various wordy things that we say we're going to do. Um, in reality, this could be summarized down into sort of three broad things. We want to number one, uh, and first of all, digitize. Number two, then connect all these things that have been digitized and number three finally transform and you can imagine that this is actually a very good description of actually what we want to do in analytics and, and data science we want to be able to capture the data connect the data do cool stuff with it um, so it, it's quite a neat analogy for us as a, as a unit so within nhs x we've established a small but perfectly formed analytics unit. There's about 15 of us. Um, and we have three broad work areas. And number one is the fairly standard thing that analytics units do, which is we provide analytical support to the different projects, programs and teams within NHSX. But the other two blobs are a lot more external, wider um, health and care system facing. So we've got analytics as a profession, as one of our key work streams and innovative analytics um, and they as you would imagine go go quite hand in hand in in many in many ways and they together i think form the transformation bit of of analytics we want to be able to work with data well and better within the nhs and with health within health and care um, but the reality is, is to be able to work with it well, you need people who can transform it. And those people need to be well trained, they need to be empowered, they need to have access to the data, they need to have access to the tools. So hopefully, analytics as a profession, um, a work stream to strengthen the analytical and data science offering, going hand in hand with a work stream to really boost innovative analytics, hopefully, uh, is, is kind of the, the central parts of transforming and opening up um, analytics. So to take <clears throat> what we're doing in analytics as a profession first, this is very much a team sport. Um, and so all these people here on the screen, apart from me, don't actually work for NHSX. We are very much going hand in hand with NHS England Improvement and, and others to try and really tackle the analytical offering um, and the profession for those working out in uh, health and care. So at the very top of this, we have Ming Tang, who's the director of data <coughs> analytics for NHS EI, and then a whole host of other people, um, including Jake from PHE and other members of NHS EI. We have formed a mini team to do uh, various um, work in the analytics as profession space. Um, and before we start talking about what that actually means, I want to just raise us up uh, several levels um, into the sky to really understand how the analytics workforce fits into other broader things that are going on in the system. <clears throat> and a fairly key one is uh, the, the programme of digital readiness being run by um, Health Education England, which was previously known as Building a Digital Ready Workforce, but has now been snappily renamed to digital readiness <clears throat> and um, within that entire program of work which is building a digital ready workforce there's a fairly um, large uh, chunk given over to the informatics workforce 
um, which increasingly it is recognized there is, is heavy overlap with the uh, the digital data and technology or DDAT um, career framework grouping that was developed by the government digital service originally for um, central government but there is applicability in many different public sector areas and and in particular it, increasingly it's recognized that actually this could be with um, the right tweaking quite a nice framework for health and care <clears throat> and within DDAT they have these these different job families which you can see here in kind of purpley red and and fairly crucially the data family at the minute has four um roles described underneath it the data analyst the data engineer the data scientist and the performance analyst so you can see now we are now trickling back to the world of of the um of the of the analyst and hopefully you would recognize within that broadly the work of what analysts do although it is also recognized that there is work that is required to make this fit more appropriately in into health and care um but just to sort of really emphasize the point that, that a lot of anything to do with analytics needs to uh, be aligned with and fit into this this broader program of work so this is the, the top down end at the other end at the grassroots there are absolutely fantastic initiatives going on in the analytics and data science space absolutely perfectly exemplified by the NHSR community and, and this amazing conference um, and Afra already mentioned the great work of the Health Foundation and the strategy unit who um, are hosting us today and, and many many others and so we as the NHSX NHSEI team along with some of the other work that's being done by HEE would like to see our role going forward as a sort of ecosystem enabler that sits under this wider data family work, but um, also brings in a lot of the amazing work that's going on already. So what are we actually going to do now that we've said the sort of the strategy behind it all? Um, we think there's three foundations here. Um, we think that <clears throat> number one, we have a role to play in developing frameworks and guidance, such as the career frameworks we've talked about. Number two, we need to really support community and just general development. And number three, we need to really get behind innovation and sharing. And um, the reality of what that means um, as a starter for 10, we think we need to get on with pushing a single analytical framework, such as a, a um, tweaked DDAT data family, um, change for push for changes in ESR, publish policies. So for example, we're about to um, release a blog on the use of open source tools, <clears throat> which we hope will then turn into a full policy paper and guidance for the system. And we would like to think, hope that that is the start of, of many um, policies and guidance that we can issue in support of, of doing better analytics. <clears throat> Within the community and development, you know, fairly obvious here, but just really get behind a lot of the stuff that exists already, NHSR community, AFA, <clears throat> um, and try and um, communicate and um, promote things in a way that it, it provides clarity to analysts and things can all be sort of in one place in a, in a one-stop shop. The innovation and sharing side of things is um, really where my my passion and background lies um, and as I mentioned we really want to uh, promote and really um, demonstrate the practices of sharing open code, coding in the open, proper use of github, uh, interoperable ways of working um, and actually doing work that is innovative and then we share it which is of value to the system. So for example we are already working with the Health Foundation on their um, Advancing Applied Analytics Award this, this year and are supporting, um, providing advice and mentorship to, th to three of the, uh, the projects there. Um, we're already having great discussions with the NHS, uh, our community, Mohammed, um, how we can provide hands-on support for some of the NHSR solutions. Um, and we also want to um, develop a short term PhD internship scheme so that we can strengthen our links with academia, but have those academic links really rooted in genuine need. So matching up, for example, PhD projects with short term projects in, in local systems um, for mutual benefit. Um, 
so this leads us on quite neatly to the innovative analytics branch and work stream within our uh, team. Um, this is headed up by two data scientists, Johnny and um, Dan. Um, Johnny comes joins us from NHS England, where prior to joining us, he was heavily involved in a lot of the um, the COVID modelling that went on. And Dan joins us from NHS Digital, where he has a background in text analytics and also more of the sort of data pipelining side of things. And um, as the name suggests, they are there to do innovative projects, but based in in need. But they have a really quite a, a blue sky remit with the idea that. Um, they have this, the skills and and the space to ex explore advanced analytics and also a real strong commission to act in a highly transparent way so that this can be um, shared and reused as, as much as possible. Um, and these slides are, are written by Dan and Johnny, so about to sort of reach the edge of where I can uh, talk credibly about these things, but the sorts of things that they are going to be um, in doing and are doing right now involve, as you can see, sort of proof of concept work, time to investigate, but then actually then turning that into technical advice and recommendations, collaborating externally, providing support with coding, and also crucially performing that sort of horizon scanning function mm -hmm. on, on behalf of, of the system so that we can all uh, be kept up to date with, with new uh, things. Um, and the sort of project areas are um, really trying to work with with GitHub and Git in a practical way. Um, Johnny's already had several uh, projects involving synthetic data generation. He released with NHS England a, a sort of six million um, row A&E data set that was all entirely synthetic. Um, as I say, Dan's got a background in in natural language processing and, and is supporting various projects there and is also supporting work with our AI, AI lab with their, um, their COVID chest imaging database AI work. Um, and yeah, again, uh, various types of approaches that they have interest in. So from Johnny's COVID work, there was an awful lot of work being done because obviously lots of people reducing models, how, you know, how can you actually share and make models interoperable so that we can all access and use them um, Bayesian inference, machine learning, system modeling. So both Johnny and I um, have a background in operational research um, anal analysis, um, and Johnny in particular has an interest in discrete event simulation and agent-based modeling. So that is um, us. And that's the end of my presentation, but I would be delighted to take any questions. Thank you. There's been a bit of discussion about um, a buzz for the, well, a general buzz anyway, we get that, and you're, you've been adding to it, and open source tools and direction is really exciting. No questions, oh, a question's just popped in as I was just saying no questions. I'm just gonna read it as it comes through. How do you reconcile the competition encouraged between different bodies in the NHS and private third sector with being open and sharing with regards to data? Similar questions with regards to information governance, could the NHS act as a single organization for sharing? This is an excellent question, one that we absolutely um, recognise, which is why we see the need for a, a national central body to produce clear guidance and policy on what is allowed and, and what is appropriate, because we have heard anecdotally from lots of different people that they're producing code in their particular system and they are just not allowed to publish it for whatever reason, be IG concerns, IP concerns, or just it all sounds a bit weird and scary and why would we bother doing that when we've got other work that we could get on and do. So I think there's absolutely a, 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 a real, quite urgent need for sort of central guidance. There is another question that's come in and it, it kind of fits to these national bodies and how they all fit together. How does NHSX particularly fit with NHS Digital? And I guess also I'm gonna to add to that NHS Improvement and NHS England and there's been a huge structural change where do you fit into that? Yep. So um, I think in some ways forming NHSX was perhaps a controversial statement, perhaps a little bit misleading because it's, it's perhaps better to think of us as the digital data and technology directorate of 
both NHS England and the Department of Health, all that we've rec done is recognise that both of those bodies are big and important and had teams working in that space. Wouldn't it be better, be better if we put them put them together? But we still absolutely report and are responsible for the digital data and technology strategy and policy of our home departments, NHS England and Improvement and the department. And then we fit with NHS Digital. And this is a very broad uh, categorization, but essentially the theory is that we would set the policy and the strategy and they are the, the delivery arm. In reality, there is some crossover because we may well do some delivery and they often do some policy and strategy, but that is the broad idea. Another question, which is, what are your thoughts about training for clinicians and managers? In terms of analytical training? I suspect uh, so. I think <laughs> it doesn't go into that much detail, but I think yes, because it's like we as analysts know one thing, but we're trying to talk to managers and clinicians who may not know or have the same feel that we do for the data, for IG, for all of those kind of things. Um, yeah, I think data literacy is is a huge piece. It's a thorny piece. So I certainly haven't got any um, answers straight off the bat, but absolutely recognise. And, and I think a lot of the work that HEE do recognises that the two have got to go hand in hand. You need to upskill your specialist workforce, but then you also need to bring your generalist workforce up to a, a base level too in order for them to work well together. I would also say that there is some work to do on the non-analytical skills so i'm gonna sorry rephrase this because i'm <laughs> potentially about to make <laughs> there is no insult intended but for example i would love to have training available to me which is data leader specific leadership training because there's lots of data training and there's lots of leadership training but often you go on very generic leadership courses it's not specific to the specialist field you find yourself in and I think that that would be a huge area of, of, of interest certainly for me. I'd agree. Another question they're coming in dripping in are you planning a national IT framework for open source software many IT departments locally have no understanding of open source software and applications like R and Python and they're far too locked down we've heard this haven't we <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely recognize this and from a, from a very personal opinion i think it's an absolute no-brainer that open source software should be allowed um and i think that yes the center has a role to play to make it clear that these things are encouraged and acceptable um, and certainly we've recently had a note, a note go around central government that says please you know encourage your analysts in your different government departments to have access to R and Python. So I don't see why we can't do something similar for the NHS. And we've had the same with um, data sharing as well, code sharing, not data sharing, sorry, code sharing. Mm. There was a drive that we've seen, the national bodies have been asking for us to do that for a while, but it's not happening for these very reasons. I have one question, which was about the data that you said that Johnny had created the synthetic data. That sounds very exciting. I was just wondering if that's available somehow by yes, analysts or publicly? Yeah, it's it's on the NHS EI um, website, somewhere in their, the labyrinth Fantastic. of their data pages, but it is there, I promise. Ooh, well, we'd love to get, I'd love to get hold of that. I say we, I'm doing globally. Any other questions? We've got a few things. There was a, there was a, oh, an email a link. link. Thank you, Johnny. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Good. Um, Gary Hudson shared his email address in there for the innovation that you, where he wants to be involved with the innovation. So he's in there. We're also just to do another plug for the Slack group. We're there. So this conversation could continue there if you wanted to do that. And I'm waiting patiently for Johnny's link to go in there. Um, no other questions. I think we can say that that's, that's over then. Thank you ever so much for that. This is very exciting times and it's so good to have you in a national body speaking up for us. There we go. The link's there. And um, we will see everybody at the next talk. It should automatically go. Anastasia, yes. explain a bit more. Yes, thank you, Zoe. Yeah, I think we finished a bit earlier here, but let's just start next one earlier as well um, so we can um, move. And uh, if you have any delays, you'll catch up with this. But thank you a lot, Zara. It was absolutely fantastic talk. And uh, I can see clapping is coming again. Uh, so oh, thank you. One question, because we've got a bit of time, came in at the last minute. Do you feel there is sometimes too much competition for scarce analyst resource across the various organisations? Will NHSX exacerbate this? 
I'm thinking that it's that there are some very prime roles, let's say, in the national bodies. And it may be about that, that analysts may move to the national bodies and we lose, we have a bit of a brain drain. I see what you're perhaps. saying. Um, I think there is scarce resource, absolutely. I think that um, aside from brain drains to NHSX, I would like to hope that by opening up analytics and sharing more and making things more efficient and um, automated, that would actually in the end, result in more time for analysts. In respect of a brain drain to NHSX, <clears throat> possibly not because we are quite a small team. Um, <clears throat> and actually what we hope to do through the sort of PhD internship programme, for example, is actually pump more resource the other way. So hopefully not is the answer there. That's great news. Thank you for that. Thank you for a good question as well. Thank you for everybody's questions. If Anastasia would like to come back in and finish what you were saying sorry as I jumped in no no it's fine so thank you again I uh, obviously thank you Sarah and uh, I think what we'll do now is we'll end the session and we'll try to start uh, next session sooner so if you want to join us for Chris Manny session uh, you can either stay here and we'll pull you when it starts or you can now use the drop-down menu and go to next session once again thank you, Sarah and thank you Zoe for facilitating the session and I will see you shortly <laughs>